Good evening, my lords, my ladies, gentlemen, gentlemen. Good night, all of you, you just look beautiful. Except for you. You're not very attractive, you're not at all. But I'll let you stay. So, tonight we play the history of Tom Jones. A family. Oh, set your minds to grasp it, gentle people. For I am not regularly an actor. Thank heaven for small favors. I am Partridge, your humble servant, schoolmaster, barber, and servant. I tell the story of Tom Jones because I know the facts, and I do play some small part. Many said Tom Jones was born to hang, and others called hanging too good for him. But I say Tom was a paragon of virtue, misunderstood in this wicked world as the good so often are. Our story takes place more than 200 years ago, a time when the world was indeed wicked, body, and licentious. In short, a time like any other, but I am bound to protect innocence, and as all of you here look here. I shall endeavor to launder the more deadly passages of this history. Tom Jones, the founding, was born, or rather found, in Somersetshire, one of the Green Counties in England, in the home of Squire Alworthy. And this is Miss Bridget Alworthy, a maiden lady of uncertain age. She is to be commended for her good qualities rather than her beauty. I thank heaven I have not the beauty's lady's profession. Beauty is a woman's have no fear. <laughs> and this is the good squire himself, returned just now after an absence of many months. I thank heaven for my safe return from London, where I can truthfully say they love me just as much as they do in the country for my wisdom, my godliness, and my money. Welcome home, brother. Thank you, sister. <laughs> this squire, exhausted. Wow, I'm exhausted. Retired immediately to his bedchamber, <laughs> from which he instantly issued a great cry. Merciful heaven! Brother, what's happening? What's happening?
<laughs> and so the two boys were to match. The fatherless Blipple, a serious, studious boy, who saved his money and became the most virtuous man in the county, as he was first to admit. Sir Francis Bacon, 1561 to 1626, said, Nobility of birth commonly abated industry. I have proved him wrong. And Tom was a cheery fellow, more at home in the woods and fields than in the books. He wasted his money and buying food for the starving children. Hard a lucky fellow. The whole world is too good to me. Foundling! The good squire engaged two gentlemen to educate his nephew in his war. The Reverend Mr. Dwight, a severe disciplinarian and gentleman of great learning. Human nature is the perfection of all virtue. And Mr. Square, a philosopher. The human mind, since the fall, is nothing but a sink of iniquity. Their contrary teachings did not confuse the two pupils. As Mr. Blipple learned everything, it is an discourse on either side, pleasing both his students. God is love. Yes. Science is all white. Well, Tom, <laughs> listen to neither. <laughs> On the next estate, Squire Allworthy, lived a Mr. West, a gentleman much given to horses, hounds, and hunting. Call you! If you can get a good friend, Tom, we will assist him in a matter concerning pictures. Over there, sir! Call you! That's why it's best that that peasant will pluck for mine. <laughs>
enjoy her 500 pounds a year. You should enjoy it for her. Yes. She wants it that way. Hi ho and Willoughby! He's well! The squire's well! Bless your long faces! Then join me up and find. Hey, Derry Down! Hey, Derry Down! Hey, Derry Down, Bill! Mr. Jones, your behavior is offensive! We are in mourning! We'll mourn no longer! The squire lives! It is the happiest day ever! During these exact religions! My dear mother has gone to her great reward. Oh, I beg your pardon. My joy at the squire's recovery was so excessive that I did not hear of your loss. Let me, allow me to offer my condolences. It is of no wonder that the loss of a parent should make so little impression on you. How can you warn one parent when you, yourself, from the moment of your birth, are like both? Confound you for a rascal! Do you refuse my hand and insult me with the misfortune of my birth? Insult you? I merely call you what you are. A cavalier! A foul man! Do you call me a family, sir? Thank you. 
Squiggies, teach you not to tell him. I will keep your secret under one condition. That you see little. Ugh. That you are civil to little. Ugh. That you regard him as the person who is to be your husband. Ugh. Or else, let my brother do his worst. Uh -oh. I am forced to agree. But will you not speak to my father and try to change his mind? I mean, this is little is to be the unhappiest woman alive. <coughs> On the contrary, Sophia, I will do all I can to put your honor out of the care of your family. Remember, marriage has saved many women from ruin. I give praise Mr. Blickle to the attack, metaphorically speaking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sir, unhappy news. My dear mama is lost on the road from London. Lost? Bridget? Your mother is an excellent needlewoman, but she has no sense of direction. Not lost upon the road, lost from this world. Carried off by a gout to the head and the stomach. How very unfortunate. I should have never gone to London. The air says not to kill a stronger body. Brother, I protest. London is not to blame. She died in the country upon leaving London. It was London, I say! Oh, please! <laughs> we'll mourn Mrs. Blipple later. The matter at hand is our paper must have rest. All right, let's get on with it. Have you thought of marrying? No. Good! <laughs> our neighbor, Mr. Western, has offered you his daughter Sophie in marriage. I have, of course, accepted. But, Uncle, I am too young to marry and too recently bereaved. Nonsense will make a man of you. But my Sophie's as pretty as a nest in pot. But she plays and sings with a true voice. But she is charming and gay. But she rides near as good as a man. But she is very, very rich. I shall in all things do what will give you pleasure, dear uncle. <laughs> I'll tell Sophie it's uh, good. The doctor says I must have rest. Oh, my girl, no tears, none of your maiden tears. My sister has told me all. But my aunt's betrayed me, oh, I'm undone. Why, you betrayed yourself, girl, fainting like a very woman, and now crying because you're going to marry the man you love. Women are all alike. Your mother, I remember, women and wine when we were wed, but 24 hours later, it was all over. So come, my girl, Mr. Blithel's a brisk young man who put an end to your squeegee. Oh, the little, oh, she told you about the little. I'll come to you. Little, let's get on with it. Here he is, girl. Little. Miss Sophia? Yes? My uncle has informed me that he and your father have decided that we should be married. I am most pleased. Your emotion overwhelms The me. thought of our future bliss has, I fear, aroused the beast in me. La, sir, you are forward. You shock me. I wish only to express the joy, if I may so put it, of the merging of our souls and of our estates. We <laughs> take too many liberties, sir. Your pardon, madam. Leave me now. Passion, I feel, to begin to overcome me. Passion? For me? Let us listen, Passion. Leave me now. Your servant, madam. Well, she's mad about me. <laughs> ah, Sophie girl, ask what you will. Dresses, birds, livestock. I have no fortune but to make you happy. Now, 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 now. I fear no destruction but the loss of my 
goodbye, Sophia. I can never part with you. I will never part from you. You have left my niece alone with Jones? Perhaps you can persuade her to marry Blizzle. Oh, <laughs> more than gothic ignorance. You can call it a flawed country you know? Tis Jones she loves. Jones?
detained backstage by uh, important matters of business, yes. Oh, yeah. Now, now, love, not in front of all these people. <laughs> well, anyway, here we are in part two of our story. I like to call it the journey. Of course, the part where Tom goes from Somersetshire to London. Everything all set now. Oh, you forgot the tree!
running away from your husband. That's the new reality for you. Please! But she wrote that she was handsome and gallant and charming. And so he was, until I said that fatal I do. Then, overnight, he turned from Prince Charming into a dragon. So very jealous, he chained me in my room and fed the only boiled potatoes. Oh, Sophia, it was the very picture of a raving, mad Irishman. You have only yourself to blame, madam. A kind of sensible English girl marries an Irishman. Our conversation is quiet, sir. I am sure she can talk about your business. <laughs>
<laughs> Is anyone my barber? Not a barber, a surgeon. Let's well, see, it's all the same. <laughs> ah! What is it? If you please, sir, I will inspect your head, and when I see into your skull, I will give you them my opinion of the case. I hope it's not fractured. Fractured?
on the arm of the lady who asked for you. She's here? Sophia's here? Where is she? She would have disturbed you had I told her where you were. I did not tell her where I was. You fool! Blackguard! I told her you were engaged with a lady. With a lady? No, oh, I am undone. Where is she now? I'm high life. I don't know, sir. Landlady! Landlady! Sir? Have you seen the most beautiful girl in the whole world? I did, sir. I saw the lady you slept with. Oh, no. <laughs> the one who was wearing this, wearing this muff. Oh. Yes, she is mother lady. She just left for London on the coach. Left? For London? Oh, so good here. What's this? S. Western, Red Lady Burleston, Grover Square, Run for higher horses! <laughs> Oh, my God. 
And it's still in love, though she found him out with another woman, she has convinced herself of his innocence. She feels his personal grace is such that women force themselves upon him. He sounds a disgusting brute. What does he love? By her description, he has the figure of her beauty, the face of a dark. And it's a very out of modern romantic fancy. The vulgar oath. She must be protected from him. Indeed, she must. But it's a matter of his question or work. Her virtues and purity 
for his suffering on the hot <laughs> For my account, make commerce with Lady Bellaston even more odious. I must. So come, Partridge. Why, Sophie, I shall begin to fear you're still in love with the man. Upon my honor, I've had a 
is too old for writing, too young for petty points. <laughs> well, no sooner had the note been dispatched than Weston was at any best. Where's my daughter? Where is she? Squad! Oh, can I have this instant? Show me a chamber. Second door to the right. Daughter, daughter, you had instant obedience. Brother, brother, I beg you to mitigate your wrath. <laughs> so nice to see you, ladies. But why this sudden change? You are willing to protect her from her father before I am protection. It is not for me to come between a pet and a child.